How are you doing, my friend? Good evening, Ricky. I'm uh, doing pretty good. We got some uh, awesome weather out here in Minnesota. Oh, there you go. It's uh, always a pleasure to speak with you. We've had the honor of uh, talking to Ricky many times on Thursday Night Tailgate. He's been gracious enough to come on the TV side this time. And, uh, again, thanks so much for your cooperation, Ricky. And uh, we want to always start out with your, your early beginnings, uh, Ricky, your childhood down south. Uh, tell us about that, Ricky. Were you a multi-sport athlete? Tell us in so maybe some of your favorite athletes growing up. Oh, yeah, no question. Uh, I, I was a baby of nine kids. Um, I got four brothers and four sisters. Mm. And uh, my both parents had to work, obviously. And so to keep me busy, um, they put me in every sport. So growing up, I played baseball, uh, basketball, football. And uh, once I got into junior high, I ran track also. So um, fortunate enough to uh, have some brothers and sisters that were very athletic that I looked up to, and um, I watched them um, as I was growing up participate and compete in sports. Um, but my my favorite athlete of all time was Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, of course, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. So I got to watch him because you know, from Mike being from Wilmington, North Carolina, and me being from South Carolina, you know, I got to watch a lot of his games in college. And uh, he kind of inspired me to, you know, to go on and, and, and do the best, I, best that I could um, as an athlete, you know, put in the work uh, and uh, play as hard as I can in every sport that I wanted to compete in. And But from just a sports standpoint, um, I think my mom gave me a lot of encouragement. Uh, as a kid, she always drove me to practice, made sure I was on time. And I uh, always made sure I was doing the right thing. And uh, obviously, I was, I was a mama before I grew up. And, Ricky, when you got out of high school, I mean, there, there had to be many opportunities. Uh, obviously, Lou Holtz, Lou Holtz was uh, one that came calling. But uh, tell us uh, some of the other possibilities you had at the time. Well, at the time, I was, I was sold on Carolina, okay. uh, North Carolina. Because I, I oh. told the recruiting coach, I remember just like it was yesterday, Coach Dale Evans. I told him if he didn't get me to come up for a visit, get me an a autograph with Michael Jordan, let me meet him, and it was a done deal. I was going to commit uh, to North Carolina. And so he did, he got me a recruiting visit. Uh, I got to meet Michael Jordan after a basketball game. Hmm. And I told Coach Evans, you know, I verbally committed before I left. And my mom told me, well, you know, just go to Minnesota, you know, take the trip and see how it is. You never get to go anywhere. <laughs> so I came to Minnesota, took a uh, recruit trip up here. Had a good time. I uh, really liked the guys. Uh, had a great time with Coach Oates. Uh, but at the end of the day, I got back home. I told my mom, you know, I'm sold on Carolina. Um, you know, because I'll get to hang out with Michael Jordan for two years. <laughs> well, lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, Michael Jordan decided to go pro to the NBA. Right, right. And I go, well, Mike's not going to be there. So I told my mom, I'm going to Minnesota. Uh, ah, she interesting. Said, that fine. That's something. Interesting. Again, on the phone with uh, former professional quarterback Ricky Foggy. Tony, question. And uh, good evening, Ricky. It's it's a pleasure to meet you and to speak with you. Uh, the um, you end up in Minnesota. You end up with a gentleman by the name of Lou Holtz, who, for all intents and purposes, is legendary in in many many fields. What were your impressions of him, and what did he teach you? Uh, to be honest, my high school football coach, um, guy named Buddy Jennings, who came from my Furman University in South Carolina, uh, when I was trying to make my decision, he was telling me, you know, Coach Oates is the kind of guy that will, you know, go in, change the program around, and then most likely he'll leave in two years. This is honestly what he told me. Mm. But, I, you know, I told him, uh, you know, on my recruiting visit, you know, I felt real comfortable around Coach Oates. Uh, he said he's getting the opportunity to play quarterback. You know, he wanted me to be a part of the culture that he's changing at the University of Minnesota. And, uh uh, so I told my high school coach that, you know, this is the right place for me. So, uh, 
And so uh, once I got here, I mean, and, and he was an honest guy. I got to Minnesota. They put me at running back, put me at wide receiver, put me at defensive back, tried to put me at uh, kick return, punt return. And so I went to Coach Oak one day. I go, Coach, I thought you said you just want to let me play quarterback. And he said, no, I haven't forgot, Ricky. So he put me at quarterback, and um, I was number five on the depth chart. And so it was two weeks ago, uh, we threw the first regular season game, pre regular season game. I was number five, and I was telling myself, there's got to be some kind of way I can get to number two. If I get to number two, then I'll overtake the number one spot. And so uh, within a week of the first game, I was at that number two, I was the backup. And so going into the first game against uh, Purdue, I remember, um, they put me in at halftime. And after that, I took over. And four years later, you know, I was starting quarterback for the University of Minnesota. <laughs> but the, the most important thing about what Coach Hill taught me uh, is to be competitive. And this whole thing was you know, be prepared. He always prepared us mentally uh, from Wednesday to Friday on how to beat our opponents. Uh, I remember one day we was playing uh, Purdue with Jim Everett as a quarterback. Mm, mm. And, and Jim was averaging probably over 300 yards a game. Mm -hmm. And uh, putting up over 30, 40, 40 points a game. And Coach O's we was in the, in the meeting room, and he goes, you guys probably not going to believe this, but we'll probably beat this team by 30 points. Mm. And, uh, of course, we're looking around like, you know, like the guy's losing his mind. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, lo and behold, <laughs> we beat them by 35. Um, wow. We control the ball on offense. Our defense played pretty well, and, and Jim couldn't get on the field. I think out of the 60 minute game, we held the ball for 38 minutes. Wow. And so, uh, and that was Blue's thing. Coach Holtz uh, was a great motivator, of course, and he still is. Um, you know, he always put his players first in everything that we did. And he always told us we had to trust each other, you know, trust your teammates, mm. um, trust in what we were doing, and we were going to change the program. and. You know, in that short two years he was here, it was truly amazing. It was, mm -hmm. and um, and after again after uh, Lou left Minnesota, of course he ended up at Notre Dame, but uh, Ricky would remain there all four years as the quarterback. And uh, in '86, Tony, uh, Minnesota upset Michigan. That was the first time in almost a decade that the Gophers had mm -hmm. beat the Wolverines. And uh, speaking of Michigan and those big crowds in the Big Ten. Rick, I mean, normally, I mean, there are many times you played in front of 80,000 to 100,000 people. Can you explain to our viewers what that's like? I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. We think of a crowd around here of 40, 50,000 to be huge. Uh, 80 to 100 must be something special. Well, you're talking about a kid come from a, a small town of about 5,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. And so, uh, Hey, it was mind-boggling, uh, you know, having my first game at the Metrodome. I even say before that, even our spring game that we had, um, we probably had about twenty to 30,000 people. And that was the most people I've ever seen in one place in my life. So uh, having them go into a stadium uh, like the big house in Michigan yeah. and mm. you walk out um, for free games, and it's half full. There's probably 50,000 people in there. Uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, the first time I was down there my freshman year in 84, um, I think it kind of got to me early on. But once you get into the Florida game, uh, they, they kind of drown out all the crowd noise. And, uh, and you're totally, totally focused on what's going on um, at the task at hand as far as the game plan and, and trying to execute. But... I tell you, uh, when we were down there in 1986 and we pulled off that upset, mm -hmm. most amazing thing that I've ever witnessed in my life was to see 
see 100,000 quiet fans. That's true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, that was awesome. Yeah, that that is uh, again one of the biggest upsets uh, in the '80s. That that was something to see, and again, it hadn't happened in a while. And Ricky was there for that, and uh, he's a member of the bowl a bowl team uh, in '85. Uh, again, quite the career at Minnesota. Uh, Tony, question. And Ricky comes draft day, and. Uh, you uh, wind your way to Canada. Were you disappointed that you didn't get to play in the National Football League? No, not at all. Uh, because when I was getting worked out, I was I was a slim guy. I was six two, probably about one seventy in college. Mm. But I was really fast and quick. So I was you know four three one in the forty. So I wasn't shocked at the time when you know I had scouts coming in and working me out. And wanted to know if I, you know, play quarterback, wide receiver, DC, defensive back, and they was putting a lot of emphasis on the wide receiver, wide receiver, and the defensive back. Mm. So, uh, no, not disappointed at all. I was just happy that I had another avenue that I could take and go and play in the Canadian Football League, and because uh, I couldn't imagine me at my size having to go into the NFL uh, and try to become a wide receiver, mm -hmm. you know, I never liked getting hit. So <laughs> I definitely didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so the route I took, I took the right route. Um, you know, I played 10 years in the CFL, Canadian Football League. I got another eight years in arena football. And, you know, I, I, I might have had one mild concussion. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it would have been the same if I would have went into the NFL. So Good, good idea. I, I got lucky, you know, from that standpoint because, you know, if I seen you coming, you wouldn't go hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, again, quite the career, as he said, uh, years in Canada and uh, in the Arena League, Ricky passed for close to 18,000 yards, Tony, 325 touchdowns, just 80 interceptions. Wow. Uh, that's quite quite the years back there. And, and as far as up in Canada, the bigger field, Ricky, the different rules, wider field. It must uh, it must be pretty attractive for a quarterback like yourself that can throw and run. Yeah, make no mistake about it. It's uh, that's a fun league to play in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great for a guy um, that's kind of my athletic skills who could run and throw, and so. No, I, I sit right in. I have no no doubts or regrets about going and playing the Canadian Football League. I had an awesome time. I met some uh, awesome teammates that I still stay in contact with and actually got two great cups, which is equivalent to the True. Super Bowl down yeah. in, here in the NFL. I mm -hmm. uh, got one in 1991 with the Toronto Argos mm -hmm. and 93 um, with the MS Eskimos. So um, um, wouldn't change a thing if I had to. Well, that's great. We mentioned all your success in the Arena League, uh, Ricky, especially 2001 with the Florida Bobcats, 3,619 yards, 69 touchdowns. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, and I'm sure you came across a lot of other players, Ricky, that you probably said to yourself, my goodness, man, these guys should and could have played in the NFL. Did that happen a lot to you? No, uh, you know, it, it just wasn't, uh, you know, at that point, it wasn't a um, uh, good timing mm. for me. Now, if I was born 20 years later, like I always told my mom, you know, we'll be sitting on the, in, the, on the, in the big house right now. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was one of those deals. You know, um, they, the NFL wasn't uh, at the point where they was having, you know, dual threat quarterbacks. Um, I don't think race or anything had anything to do with it. It was just the fact that, you know, everybody was dropping back, playing the ball. And so, uh, yeah. uh, you know, like I said, uh, um, you know, if I if I didn't have another avenue like the CSL I could have went into, then maybe I would have, you know, I'd be a better person about it. But, you know, I had a great career, and, you know, like I said, I wouldn't change anything if I had to. Tony. And, uh, Ricky, as far as going to Canada, I mean, you're a fella from the South. You're an American. You end up in Canada. Was that a cultural adjustment at first? No, you got to remember, I was I, I was up here in the Midwest. You're in, you're in Minnesota, Minnesota. Was, right. Yeah. yeah, that was a culture experience for me, I tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, 
both uh, socially and weather-wise. So, no, I was, I was after my four years here in Minnesota, I was ready for um, going into the Canadian League because it's the same, same style of people, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they call Minnesota nice, and I think it's even better in the Canadian Football League uh, or in Canada, period. Um, people real receptive, and, you know, everybody is, is, is fun to be around when you're winning games. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Ricky, I think we've talked to you on the other show. Uh, you, uh, so many guys, so many professional athletes, after their days are over, especially when you had a long career like you do, they have a tough time uh, transitioning into quote unquote civilian life. But you went right into coaching from the Arena League. Is that something, uh, was it easy transition? Is it something that you wanted to do? You probably didn't have enough time to think about uh, what else you were going to do. No, that was easy. I, I knew I always wanted to, uh, once I was done playing, and uh, to give back to uh, football mm-hmm. in a coaching capacity, or whether it's coaching or training. And so, no, I, I knew I wanted to get into coaching right away. And, you know, I'm, I'm, seriously, I've never been one of those guys who's like, had any regrets about uh, my football career, um, you know, from playing or coaching, uh, from training that I also still do now. Um, I always knew um, that once I got done playing, that I'd give back in some type of capacity. So it was it was an easy transition for me from going um, from a player uh, into coaching arena football, and then getting out of arena football coaching, then going into high school coaching football. So um, no, it was it was perfect. It was perfect. Okay, we have a few more minutes left with Ricky Foggy, Tony. Ricky, in uh, today's NFL. Um, it, it seems like the past couple of years, one controversy over another. Uh, we had the locker room controversy. Now it's the national anthem controversy or something else taking place. As an ex-player, when you're watching this, what's going through your mind these days? It's kind of hard to say. You know, I've, I've never been, you know, like I always tell my friends, I'm not going to sit down and talk to you about religion or talk to you about these politics mm-hmm, because, mm-hmm. you know, people have their own ideals and, you know, it always calls controversy. And I've never done controversy in person. Right. You know, I always think there's, you know, there's a, a right place to do things, um, you know. And so I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into that because I really, I really don't have an opinion on it. I understand. Um, you know, yeah, so... It's hard for me to say. I really don't have an opinion, but people, you know, you have the right to express your feelings. You know, it is America, so you have that a right to do that. Um, but once you get into all of the political and religious stuff, mm-hmm. I just stay away. Honestly, I stay away from it because I've never been one of those guys to, you know, voice my opinion because, you know, I look out for me. I look out for my kids and, and my immediate family. And, if, you know, if everybody's okay within my intermediate circle, and then, uh, you know, I, I just let all the outside stuff go. Yeah, good, good, good uh, approach. Good perspective. And, and we, we, we aspire to do the same here. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we know that you've uh, obviously you've coached in the Arena League, Ricky. You've coached at the high school level. And I'm sure you have a lot of uh, young quarterbacks you've been around over the years. And they probably, you've come across them, right, Ricky, they, they say, I'm going to be the next Peyton Manning or I'm going to be the next uh, Cam Newton. You know, what do you say to these kids? You don't want to discourage them, uh, Ricky, but you got to keep them on a, on a straight path. No, I, I tell them go for it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, with the, you know, the cold concussion deal going on where uh, the numbers are dropping in, in, in schools you know, mm-hmm. all across the country, you know, parents because of the fear of concussion. So, no, I encourage kids to, to have those lofty goals because it's tough. You know, it's, there's, there's a very... Uh, limited number of players uh, and athletes that make it to the professional level. And that's in every sport. Uh, so, And they have to realize that also. So take into consideration that, you know, if you get this college offer, hmm. scholarship, you know, make sure you get your degree just in case it doesn't work out for you right. because there's such a small percentage. Yeah. So, no, that's what we strive for. We want our, our kids that we train to have those lofty goals and and be dedicated and do everything in, in your will to try to make it happen. Yeah, final question, Tony, for uh, Ricky. Yeah, back to the young people, Ricky. You know, the 
back when Bob and I were kids, I'm going to tell you how long ago that was, mm -hmm. uh, we had like three television channels. We had a library if we wanted to go read something. Today there's distractions all over the place. Is that a challenge for the kids that you're coaching to get them to focus on football? Oh, yeah. There's no question. There's a new uh, mm -hmm. new age of kids that, you know, sit in front of TV and you're gaming, you know, every free moment that they have. Um, but, you know, you just have to give them something to look forward to. You know, you always have to uh, remain positive with kids, um, always focus on the good thing that they're doing, and remind them that, you know, this is the, the success that you're going to have down the road. And so, um, you know, getting them off the couch is def definitely more difficult than it was when I was growing up because we didn't have those gaming. And, you know, mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to be inside when we was born. We always wanted to be outside playing. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it is a challenge, but the kids that, that that's really dedicated and show up and, and put in their work, they understand what it takes. Um, but we try to get the kids who have a difficult time getting out and uh, participating and, and training. And, and we try to play, pay more close attention to those kids also. That's great. Well, Ricky, it's been a pleasure to speak it with sure you. Has. We always enjoy our time, especially on the radio side. I'm sure Chris will be in contact with you to join us there again. Uh, I know you do a lot of uh, golfing. I want you to hit those balls straight whenever you can. And uh, it's always great to see your pictures. And, uh, again, check out Ricky on Twitter and on Facebook and, uh, again, on shows like this because he's very gracious with his time. And uh, we can't thank you enough, Certainly Ricky. We'll time. continue to be in touch, my friend. You stay well. Good night, Ricky. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Good night. Anytime. Good night.